Coming up on WAC Football Friday, Sam Houston marches ahead in the FCS playoffs. We'll preview what it will take to survive another round. Plus, we'll show you how the Bearcats escaped with a victory over future WAC member Incarnate Word. And we'll catch up with the founders of Walk On Radio, who happen to be a couple of walk-ons for the Bearcats. That's all ahead on WAC Football Friday. Welcome to WAC Football Friday, I'm Kendra Sheehan. Sam Houston's win streak dates back over two years now. Future WAC member Incarnate Ward looking to put an end to the Bearcats' winning ways with a trip to the FCS quarterfinals on the line. At Bowers Stadium in Huntsville, the Cardinals come out on fire, scoring the first TD of the game, and the Bearcats find themselves in an unfamiliar position, trailing. Sam Houston ties it up on this Noah Smith three-yard run. Smith would have 95 yards on 10 carries on the day. But UIW continues to impress with another score to take the lead, and once again, the Bearcats are playing catch-up. Until all-WAC running back Ramon Jefferson gets the carry, goes through the hole, gets all the way to the end zone, a 48-yard run to give SHSU the lead again. Jefferson had 166 yards on the ground on the day. Still second quarter, Eric Schmid, what can't he do? The QB keeper, the senior somersaults over the defense, flips his way into the end zone for six more. This would be our WAC top play of the week. Let's go to the fourth quarter with under eight minutes to play. Incarnate Word QB Cameron Ward tosses his fifth touchdown of the day. The Super Soft had 481 yards passing as well. We are tied up at 42. An undefeated playoff streak in Bauer Stadium on the line with a little over two minutes to go in the game. Schmid runs it three yards for the score to put Sam Houston up 49-42. Last chance for UIW. The Bearcats defense needs a stop against Ward, who has had a huge day. No pressure. Under 30 seconds left on the clock. SHSU stuffs Ward. A yard short of the end zone, shades of Friday night lights, and the number one seed in the FCS playoffs escapes elimination. The streak is alive at 22 consecutive wins, a 49-42 victory from Bauer Stadium. They remain undefeated all time at Bauer Stadium in playoff competition. Casey Keeler now 31-0 at home in the playoffs as an FCS head coach. Won five playoff games this year by a play and that's just the nature of the playoffs and i think it speaks a lot to the resilience of our team the character of our team the fact that we don't panic um and our resolve so you know great win the bearcats will continue to host up next montana state will visit huntsville in the round of eight the bobcats using a freshman qb and nearly 400 yards of total offense on the ground to defeat ut martin this past saturday Montana State is 10-2 overall this year. Kickoff is set for 7.30 p.m. Central Time on ESPN+. Coming up next, it seems like everybody has a podcast these days, but maybe not like Ryan Humphreys and Dalton Meyer have. We speak to the walk-ons after the break. Friday, Sam Houston is clearly a good football team on the field, but the undefeated Bearcats have players that are also making a name for themselves off the field. Eric Danner and myself catch up with Ryan Humphreys and Dalton Meyer, two hosts of the Walk On Radio podcast. We have two fabulous guests joining us, Ryan Humphreys and Dalton Meyer, who have their own podcast, Walk On Radio. Dalton, where did this idea come from? I think I had read that it, it came from quarantine that you guys started this podcast. Yeah. So, uh, I'm a film major here at, uh, Sam Houston. And the cool thing about the mass communication department is they kind of make you take 
a bunch of different classes just to kind of expand your horizons and find out what you really want to do. And one of the classes I did was a radio class. And I always shout out my professor, Professor Reed, because he made the class really fun. And uh, I got to work the radio booth and it was, it was really easy and I, I enjoyed it. And uh, I was an avid podcast listener. I like listening to sports podcasts. So I did it and I thought, man, I could do a sports podcast and there wasn't a lot of FCS talk. So I kind of came up with the name Walk on Radio and I was like, well, I need a partner. And uh, it's always a funny story when we tell it because me and Hump, we were, we were friends, but we weren't very close. But I knew how good he was with talking and how much he knew about football. And I just knew he was going to be the perfect partner, especially how we were both walk on. So just kind of went from there. It was a funny idea. We were just kind of messing around. And I always say that Hump uh, was the one that said, well, if, you, if it's a good idea, we're going to do it. And uh, so he kind of forced me to do it. But uh, I'm glad he did. And now uh, we've been rolling with it for about a year now. Ryan, can you kind of expand on, on what D Dalton just said in terms of what got you interested in doing the podcast? Uh, he said you guys didn't really know each other that well, but have kind of developed this friendship of doing the podcast. Well, he actually, he left off an even funnier part to that story. Uh, my first and his first roommate, when we got to Sam Houston, we, we were each other's roommate. Uh, we didn't didn't bond all that much. It was kind of a, a high by type thing walking through the living room uh, that first summer. Uh, so obviously we knew each other and we were on the same team. But yeah, Dalton came to me with this idea of, you know, starting this sports podcast and, you know, me and he, like he said, everybody knows that that I like to talk and, and I, I consider myself pretty knowledgeable about football. And so when he came to me with the idea, I was I was all in uh, from day one. Uh, and, you know, it's really in the beginning, it was totally just a for fun type thing. Um, we, we couldn't have dreamed that it's gotten as big as it's gotten today. Uh, and, and, you know, him, him and I are fortunate that there's people that are willingly choosing to listen to us talk about football. Now, how often do your teammates ask, can they be guests on the podcast? Every day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, all the time. And, and do you let them? I mean, how many guests of on your team have you had? <laughs> we we've been pretty we've been pretty selective with guests. Uh, early on, we were having you know a couple teammates. You know, we had Eric Schmidt on uh, the quarterback, Isaac Schley. He, he's another tight end. Um, our coaches are are super into it. But as we kind of got bigger, our guests uh, started being a little better. You know, former. Big time former players. I know we had Timothy Flanders on. He's a, a Sam Houston legend. Uh, we've had, you know, various different FCS uh, figures, you know, and they've come on. And so we, we've had good guests. Uh, and so we're a little selective. We, we kind of just, when teammates ask if they can come on the podcast, we kind of tell them that there's just a really long list of uh, people that would <laughs> like to go on. They're on the waiting list. <laughs> right. Now, Dalton, did uh, Coach Keeler, did he sign off on this? I know a lot of times, especially in season, coaches will be like, hey, stay off social media or don't, you know, don't encourage uh, locker room, you know, uh, bulletin board material. H have you received guidance for, from the school in regards to what is on and off limits in regards to your podcast? Well, Coach Keeler has definitely helped out a lot with the podcast. It's uh, me and Hump kind of know what uh, what we can and can't say. We've, we've been really smart about it. And uh, it, it's funny, we, we've we always talked about we had to we were going to plan ahead. If, if we lose a game, how are we going to talk about it and, and what's going to be the approach? And the funny thing is we haven't had that yet, uh, which is a great thing. But uh, he's been really cool. Uh, it, me and Hump tell this story all the time. Uh, when we travel, we can only wear Sam Houston gear or Under Armour gear. But uh, Coach Keeler decided that walk on radio, our hats, uh, they're allowed to be worn. So if we travel on a away game, a lot of our guys wear our hats. And it's a cool thing. So he's been really cool about it. He's been really nice. Uh, he always comes up to us and talks to us about it. And uh, it, it's just been really fun. But, of course, you, you have to be smart with what you say, uh, especially when you're talking about your own team and uh, when you're talking about news and things like that. But uh, we just been, uh, we've just been careful and uh, just figuring it out. Dare the podcast be the good luck charm. You haven't lost the game since you've started the <laughs> podcast. But Ryan, looking back to when you started this podcast in quarantine and then, you know, maybe the doors that it's open for you now, would you have believed that a year ago, you know, this is what would have happened? No, definitely not. Uh, and like I said, you know, Dalton and I are very fortunate that 
there are so many people that actively listen to, to what we have to say week to week. And, you know, Dalton and I, in, in the age of, of the NIL deals, we, we've signed with a, a podcast, a professional podcast company out of Los Angeles. Uh, and so ever since then, it's really taken off. Um, I mean, it's, it's really with the way the spring was with, with the spring season um, that I definitely think is a huge credit to, to where we've gotten uh, because it was kind of a, and this is actually, this isn't something that me and Dalton realized, but we, we did an interview for a news station at a college station. Uh, and, and they talked about how walk on radio during the spring was kind of an inside look of the ride of the national championship. And it was kind of a behind the scenes deal that every week, you know, during the playoffs, people would listen to. And really, if you go back and listen to those episodes, it is pretty special. It's special to hear it from players' perspectives, uh, you know, because obviously that was such a, just such a monumental thing that, that we're lucky to be a part of. And so to have Walk On Radio attached to that and so many people backing Walk On Radio uh, is, is pretty awesome. Dalton, you mentioned the NIL or, or Ryan might may have and your hats and, and your shirt that you have on there. In terms of how that works, I mean, because this is all kind of brand new territory for everybody in uh, both uh, collegiate administration and for, for student athletes. So how, do, how exactly does that work? How do you get in contact with a, with a company that's, uh, you know, pushing out your, your podcast and, and getting you gear uh, that, you know, that you could potentially profit off of? Well, uh, when it comes to at least uh, in, in Huntsville with the football players and the NIL deal, what's really cool about Huntsville is it's a small town. So there's a lot of local restaurants. And uh, I know the tight end group, we're sponsored by a food truck. And, uh, you know, you just do we're kind of doing like little deals where you can get a free meal if you shout them out. And uh, so for Huntsville and the Sam Houston football players, it's been kind of a smaller thing. But for me and Hump with Walk on Radio, uh, with our deal with the with Believe Podcast Network, they actually approached us. They said that they've been listening and uh, they were big fans because it was two players and you got a player's perspective. So they actually came to us and, and offered us a deal. So uh, it, like Hump said, it's been really fortunate that people have been wanting to listen to us, but it's been such a weird thing. I know me and Hump have always talked about, but even before this NIL deal happened was, you know, what, what if it happened, what, what it could be. And then when it finally came through of just a bunch of opportunities and uh, it's been really cool for all the players to get a bunch of different deals and uh, really fortunate that me and Hump started Walk On Radio when we did and how it came off and we were able to get some deals out of it. I know when I first found out about your podcast, I thought it was so unique, but so special because you, you had kind of mentioned it, but you know, a lot of times on the national championship run, you get the highlights, you get the press conferences that the local media can provide but you don't get that inside of like what is happening day to day you can try to but that just offers such unique perspective now do you guys see this you know where do you hope to take this post-graduation do you want to continue this what's your kind of game plan for the future we don't know uh I think I think that's something that we'll you know we'll kind of cross that bridge when we get there uh obviously again this has gotten bigger than Dalton and I could have ever imagined uh so I would like to say that it, it'll keep going. And, and I think, you know, post, post football lives for me and Dalton, you know, obviously me and him will be lifelong friends at this point, but post football lives, I, I think there's some cool opportunities. You know, Dalton and I have always kind of joked about, you know, maybe we'll go to a big game uh, once or once or twice a year, just all over the country uh, and, and things like that. And so, you know, if people if people keep listening and, and we keep putting out stuff and, and people enjoy it, then I think Walk on Radio will uh, will be really successful. Is this what you're looking at then for your careers? I mean, for forever and ever here, or, or what are we looking at? Well, so I'm I'm a I'm a business major. I have a marketing degree and I'm finishing up a degree in entrepreneurship. So I guess the entrepreneur and marketing in me, you know, I, I, I do a lot of our social media with walk on radio. Dalton is more of the, you know, communications podcast, you know, technical does stuff like that. And, and I know that his degree is more tailored to a, a career in, in podcasting or TV or something like that. But, you know, like I said, I think we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I'm, obviously I'm speaking for myself, uh, Dalton, he might be a forever podcaster, but I think that, again, if Walk On Radio continues to grow and, and Dawn and I were having fun and, and doing a lot with it, then sure, I, that sign me up.
Yeah, I'm uh, I'll bounce off with him. If we get to do this for a living and make money, just kind of talking about football and, and having fun, it, it would definitely be fun. I'm, I'm a film major. So like he said, it's kind of in my, my area. And uh, I just been enjoy, even if we don't do this forever, I'm getting a lot of practice. It's definitely something I can put on the resume for future, for future notice. But uh, yeah, if, it, if it's still successful and uh, we can keep doing it, I would love to keep doing it. I think people would be totally interested in following your journey, you know, post being a part of a national championship football team, possibly two time. And so we can't bring you guys on and, and not talk about your playoff run right now. You got a huge matchup against Montana state this weekend, nearly escaped incarnate ward. I was watching that. It was a nail biter. I was rooting for you guys. Very exciting. I mean, what, what has been the, the locker room like this week as you guys prepare to keep that undefeated streak alive at Bauer stadium? In the you know, playoffs. it's it's always about going one and zero, and that and that's been our thing for twenty two games in a row now. Um, it, it you know, obviously because we won the national championship in the spring, people are going to talk about us winning the national championship again. But we we look at it as the national championship isn't possible unless we get past this one, uh, and so really anything beyond Saturday doesn't matter. And so we're we're all in on on Montana State. We're super excited for the for the challenge. Uh, they're they're very talented. Everyone at this point, with with eight teams left in the country, everybody can win the national championship, uh, and we know that. Uh, you know, as far as Incarnate Word goes, uh, last week that was an awesome game. Uh, you know, we don't we don't know how to win playoff games unless it's a nail batter uh, right to the end. Um, and so it, it was a lot of fun. I don't. I don't think people are really giving Incarnate Word the credit that they deserve. Uh, Cameron Ward is one of the best players in the country. There's no doubt. Uh, that's the second time this year that we've seen him, and he's he's awesome. You know, their their offense as a whole was was really fun to watch. Um, hopefully, I mean, I'm glad that it wasn't too fun to watch. I'm glad that we were able to get <laughs> that done. But Incarnate Word, you know, awesome season. Hats off to them. Conference champs. Uh, they, they win their first playoff game in, in program history. And so uh, I definitely, I don't think people are giving them enough credit. Uh, so, but yeah, we're, we're super excited for Montana state, obviously awesome opportunity in Huntsville, Texas on Saturday. Uh, and hopefully, hopefully we get it done. You guys won the WAC championship. We just brought back football this year after about a decade off. What, what does that mean to you guys? I mean, obviously you win a national championship last year. So, winning a conference championship, not, not as uh, big a deal as, as winning a conference championship, but winning the WAC in your first year in the conference. And looking back, I don't know if you guys are history buffs or not, but you know, uh, some of the history of this conference or Ladanian Tomlinson and Marshall Falk and Steve Young and Brian Urlacher, guys like that have been in this conference. What, what did that mean to you guys to win the uh, WAC championship this year? I mean, it was really important. Uh, winning is hard and we celebrate every victory. And I know coming into this uh, season, we were, we were highly ranked. And so we had a chip on our shoulder. We knew that every game was going to be tough. Every team brought their best. And uh, you can see in the games, uh, they're all, the score may have been high, but the games were close. And they, they were all really tough fought. And uh, so winning it at the end and uh, going undefeated, it was a great feeling. Uh, even with the, not even winning the WAC, but the AQ7. We, uh, we had to face the ace, a couple of ASUN teams too. So it was fun having some new competition, seeing some old, te old teams from the Southland. But uh, just winning the WAC, it was exciting. And uh, it was just another step forward into our, our eventual trip to hopefully to the national championship. And we, and something that, you know, we always kind of jokingly talked about, you know, when we were going through the whole conference realignment thing, we always said, you know, it would be really cool to win the last Southland championship and then turn around in the same year, win the first WAC championship in, in Sam Houston history. And and we were able to do that. And so that's, I think that that's definitely special. And, you know, you talk about the, the history of the WAC. Um, I mean, you know, in a hundred years, when you look back and, you know, you look at the list of, of WAC champions, it's really cool that Sam Houston is going to be tied with, with those big names that you mentioned. As always, thanks for joining us on this playoff edition of WAC Football Friday. Be sure to check out the game this Saturday, 7.30 p.m. Central Time on ESPN Plus, And we'll see you next week. I'm <laughs> sorry.